Now, I have to ask you, we here at Sky News, we love our politics. If you had to play an Australian Prime Minister, former or current, who would you like to play the most? Hmm. Hmm. Oh, this is really, really cheeky person at the back of my head that wants to say none of the bastards. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, but I, I'd actually have to, I'd have to sit and think about that. I mean, Harold Holt's story is just fascinating, isn't it? How he just disappeared. But you know, um, you know, potentially uh, around federation is an interesting period in uh, in, in Australia's history. You know. Um, also having to deal with the Pacific War in, in Japan, that's an interesting period. You know, I'm, I'm a big fan of Gough Whitlam. Uh, I think he was one of Australia's yes. great statesmen. I think he set things in place that, um, you know, give us the confidence that we have as a nation today. You know, little decisions that he made, you know, like, like buying Blue Poles, the painting, you know. Um, yes. And everybody just castigated him at the time and tried to, you know, you know, call him irresponsible. That painting is worth five hundred million dollars now, or something. <laughs> I looked it up the other day. It's like, I mean, for, so every government decision should have that result. You know, <laughs> you get a five hundred multiple out of every single dollar you spend, and we'd be in a, in a great, a great place. You know. Um, <laughs> Well, I was thinking maybe Albo because then you get to watch your own footy team play or Bob Hawke because then you get to skull beer a lot, obviously, responsibly. Well, I mean, you know, the, the, I think we had, if you think about it, and it's funny because we didn't know it at the time, but, you know, through my lifetime, you know, with political people, you know, like Goff, like Malcolm Fraser, like Bob Hawke, like Paul Keating, I mean, in reality... You know, we had some extremely intelligent men looking after the interests of, of our country, and we were very lucky. You know, you cut to a little while later, and uh, the same quality is not necessarily, it hasn't been there. You know, I think what we have with Anthony Albanese is a man who spent his life in politics, um, but he's also spent his life completely connected to his community. The fact, you know, Here's what I'll tell you about Anthony Albanese, right? I've known him for 24, 25 years, right? And I've always known him in the context of being a South Sydney member and a South Sydney life member he became as well. You know, when I took over the club, every man and his dog asked me for stuff, you know? And uh, he never did. He never did. And he always turned up if there was something big going on for the club and we... we uh, wanted his presence, he always turned up and he, you know, kept up his own membership and he buys his own tickets and, you know, that to me shows the quality of the guy, you know. Of course, if he'd asked me for something, I would have gone, yeah, you know, but he never did, you know, because he just, if he wanted to get to the game, he was going for his own reasons, you know. And uh, I think we're really lucky at the moment with all the opaque bullshit we've had to deal with for the last 10 or 15 years. We've got a guy <laughs> that is least going to tell us the truth. Now, he might not make the decisions that you want individually every time, but over time, what Anthony will do is improve the lives of the people in this country, and that is a politician's job, not the other bullshit we've seen from people who pr have pretended to be in that position in the last decade or so the actual job of improving people's lives. And that's what I believe he's going to do for us.